In Creo Parametric, you can create parametric lattices for additive manufacturing or 3D printing. In this first part, we'll take a look at some of the basics of beam-based lattices. Here I have a part, and first off, I have this hollow area in the middle where I want to strengthen it with some lightweight lattices. To create them, you go to the Engineering drop-down menu and then choose Lattice, and the dashboard will open up. From the drop-down list for lattice type, you can change from beams to 2.5D, formula-driven, or custom, and we'll cover those in other different videos. In this video, we are going to concentrate on how you define the region that you're going to place the different lattices in, as well as some of the cell types and the different cell parameters uh, that you have. Let's start off by going back to lattice region. And here, by default, we can select the lattice volume region by selecting boundary surfaces. So let me show you how we are going to do that. I can use the left mouse button to click a surface. You can see we start getting a preview, but I don't have enough yet to bound the area. If I were to hit the check mark or the preview, it would not work. Let me hold down the control key and I can pick these individual surfaces and pick them again. And I just want to show you, let's say instead of picking probably around eight surfaces over there, there are a number of different shortcut methods. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button and then use the clear button. And one of the shortcut methods that you have is loop surfaces. If I pick a surface like this surface here and then hold down the shift key and then pick an edge, it automatically grabs all those surfaces. But we still haven't bounded a volume. Now I will hold down the control key, grab this surface, and then tap the right mouse button to get the back surface. So by using the control key, I essentially grabbed all the inside surfaces of this loop, as well as the front and the back surfaces. And you can see the default shape that we are getting. If I go to the cell type tab, Right now, it is using a square shape, but you also have a triangular shape, hexagonal shape, octagonal shape. I'll switch to those briefly in this video. In another video, I will show you the stochastic shape, which uses randomly placed points in order to define where your beams are going to be. That one looks really weird. Let me go back to my rectangular shape. You can see that the dimensions are pretty big. Let me go to the cell fill tab. Here's where you can control some of the different configurations. So for example, right now we're getting inner horizontal beams, inner vertical beams, outer horizontal beams, outer vertical beams, angular beams. You can specify if you want to get outer truss beams and you can see how the preview updates. You can also get inner truss beams. Now it's getting really crowded inside of there. Let's say I disable some of these. Here you can see that we have the potential for some dangling beams. So you can choose the option to remove the dangling beams. I want to get quite a lot of cells going on inside this region. So I'm going to change some of the different parameters. For example, here we have a ball diameter of 0.9. The ball is this area right here in the middle. Let's change that. Let's use something smaller. Let's use a value of 0.25. And it'll get so small, it's smaller than the actual beams themselves, so you can't see them. So let's change the beam sizes as well. From this drop down list, we have our cross section. Right now, it is using a circular shape for the beams. Oops, accidentally hit the, oh, thought I hit the middle mouse button. So, if we take a look here, you can see that these have a circular shape. Instead, you can go to a square shape or use a hexagonal shape. Let me go back to the circular shape. And here we have the cross-section size. It's using a value of 0.3. Let me change that to a value of 0.1 just to make them thinner. Now you can see the ball in the middle. And by the way, you can see that you also have these different dimensions in the graphics area as well. Some other different things that you have from the cell fill tab. Here's where you could choose if you want to incorporate rounds in there as well. 
I usually don't use these because as you can see, it's doing a lot of calculations. If you start putting fillets on these as well, it's going to take forever to regenerate. Let me let this continue thinking and when it comes back, I will disable that option and then resume showing you some of the different functions that we have. Okay, I removed the round radius option which really killed everything. Let's go back to the cell type tab. Here we have the cell size and right now it's using the same values in X, Y, and Z. We can make those smaller. Let's cut this down to a value of two and you can see how it shrinks. You can also change those dimensions directly in the graphics area in order to update your preview. And the other thing that we have here is a skewing angle. So here you can see I can drag it so that instead of getting our rectangular beams at 90 degrees, we can have them at an angle. Let's change this back to zero degrees. And so there we have a preview of the first cell that is created. In other videos, I'll show you how you can change some of the different options in here from regular to quasi-radial and herringbone and some of the other different ways that you can alter the shape. Let's go to the eyeglasses in order to preview. And that way you can see, hey, this is what I'm going to end up getting in the model. And I can say, hey, you know, let's go and change some of these different values that we have. You can use the play button to resume the dashboard. And of course, go back to the cell type tab. And if you want to alter any of the different values, then you can do that as well. Also, let's take a look at changing the cell shape. Here we have the triangle shape. Once again, we can hit the eyeglasses to preview what we'll end up getting. And let's resume the dashboard and check out the hexagonal shape and then hit the eyeglasses. You can see the structure and resume once more. This time we will change to the octagonal. You can see that shape. And once again, let's hit the eyeglasses. And let's go back and this time I'm going to go to the cell fill tab. Actually, the which one do I want? Let's go to, yeah, the cell fill tab. Let's uncheck the option to remove the dangling beams. And then we can hit the eyeglasses once more. And in this case here, you'll notice that I am getting some beams that might not actually be connected to anything else in here. Let's resume and go back to our simple rectangular shape and then we can hit the check mark in order to complete this feature. So that is one way in which you can define your lattice structures. I'm going to take this feature and then suppress it using the command in the mini toolbar and show you a different way of creating this. For this particular method, I am going to create a separate body in the model. And this is the method that I prefer to use in order to define my regions that should get the lattices. I'm going to unhide my main sketch and just to show you what the main sketch looks like, the way that I created this particular part is that I created a sketch with a number of overlapping entities and then used a sketch region in order to define what I wanted to extrude. I'm going to do the same thing again, but for my lattice region. Let me use the selection filter in the lower right hand corner, change this to sketch region. Now I can choose a portion of the main sketch and then I can choose to extrude it. I can access that command from the mini toolbar. Let's change the depth of this feature to two selected. And I'll choose this surface. Then from the right mouse button, I can define a side two depth, also two selected. And I'll pick the back surface. And that way I'm essentially filling in the middle volume over here. But the critical part is that I'm going to go to the body options tab and choose to create a second body. Now I can hit the check mark and it looks like one big giant solid, but I actually have two bodies, two different containers for the solid geometry. So 
Let me bring back the rest of the features in here. I'm leaving this lattice still suppressed. Now let us go to the lattice command once more from the engineering overflow menu. And this time for defining the lattice region, I'm going to check the option to replace a body with a lattice. It automatically used body too. I'm not sure why it automatically grabbed that one, but it did and that's the one that I wanted to use. Now we can go to the cell type. Let's say this time I want to use hexagons and let's change the different dimensions. Let's use two, two, and two. Let's go to the cell fill and once again change the ball diameter so it's a lot smaller. Let's change the cross section size so it's a lot smaller as well. And that way you can see a lot more of the geometry that is going to be created. And for this one, let's see, let's see what happens if I remove, well, let's see, the inner vertical beams. Yeah, I can remove those. Uh, let's see, let's see the outer vertical beams. Yeah, that one looks a little strange. Let's put some of these back in here. There's what happens if we remove the angular beams. That looks strange. Let's bring that back. And I'll choose to remove the dangling beams. And then we can hit the check mark. And there you can see the lattice structure that was implemented by replacing a body with the structure. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.